In this video, we're going to learn how to fix a known reference exception in C Sharp. Programming is all about experience, so the next time you come across this error, you'll know exactly what to do to solve it. Here, I will give you a process that you can follow every time. Let's begin! Okay, so let's see how to fix a known reference exception. But before we can do that, we need to first understand exactly what it means. Objects in C Sharp are reference types, which means that when you store a variable of a certain object type, you're not really storing that whole object. What you're storing is a reference to that object. So when you access that variable, you are accessing the reference in order to access the object stored somewhere in memory. So think of it as a pointer to a location in memory where the actual object is. If you have the reference correctly set, then you grab that memory location, then go into the memory in order to find the actual object. However, if the reference has no value, meaning that it's set to null, then the code does not know where else to go. So when you do that, that's when you get the error. The name null reference exception. First of all, it's an exception, meaning an error, and the error is due to trying to access a reference that is currently set to null. All right, so I hope that helped clarify exactly what the error means. Now let's see some practical examples and how to solve them. But what I want you to take away from this video is not how to solve a specific problem. Instead, I want you to understand what causes the error and what is the process you can follow in order to identify and solve it. So here I am in a normal c -sharp script. Now I'm working inside Unity, so that's why the script extends this class and it has this start method. But if you're working on a normal c -sharp program, then the logic is exactly the same. So this script is really very simple. Over here, I just have a variable of type object. And then down here, I'm accessing my object and calling the function to string, which should give me a string representation of whatever is stored on this object. So with this, you can probably already see the error, but let's test. And right away in the console, we see we have our null reference exception. So the issue that we have here is quite simply that the variable is defined, but the value is never set. So by default, this takes the value null. So here we are doing what we saw previously. We are accessing this variable to try to get the object, but this is set to null. So the error happens because we're trying to call the toString function on this object, but this object is set to null. Remember that when you use a dot, you are accessing that object. So in this case, access this object to use this function. And the error only happens when you try to use the object that is set to null. So for example, you could do object second object and assign it to this my object. So you can use this object when it's set to null. What you cannot do is actually access it. Now, when you get a null reference exception, your first step should be to look at where the error is happening and think of exactly what could be set to null. So over here, we have our error and we can see down here on our stack trace that the error is happening on this line. So on this script at line number 10. And in here, we can just double click on the error and it will automatically go there. See, so yep, there you go, the error is on this line. So on line 10 on this script. And now here you need to ask yourself, which is, okay, so what in here could possibly be set to null? Now in this line, we're really only doing two things. We're accessing this object and calling this function. Now calling a function simply runs the function. And like I said previously, the error only happens when you try to access a reference that is set to null. So for example, even if this function returned null, the error wouldn't be here because we're not then accessing this in order to do something else with it. So the only possible cause for the error in here is by accessing this object, which we're using to call this function. So we can verify that this is likely the error that is set to null by looking at what is stored in the variable. So let's do a simple print before we run this line. Now here I'm working in Unity. So in order to print something on the console, I can just use debug.log and then pass in the object that I want to print. So my object. So this will print whatever is stored on this object. However, if you're working on a normal c -sharp app, you can instead just use console.writeLine. So these two do pretty much the same thing. All that matters is that you have a way of seeing the current value stored in an object. All right, so with this, let's test. And yep, we still have the error, which is fine. Now the first step in the process is to identify where the error is happening and then you worry about solving. it. So here in the log, we can see that we printed null. So here we have our answer. The error is that this variable is set to null and then we're trying to access it. Now the solution here naturally will depend on exactly what you're doing with that object. So it either means that you should check for null like this. So if my object, if it is not null, then you do this. So that's one approach, just check if it's null or not. Or maybe in this scenario, this field should have been set to something before this point. So in this example, I'm just using the object type, which is the base type for every class. So down here, for example, I can just define a normal class. So I just got a type test object. And then here I can simply do my object equals new test object. 
And if I test now, and yep, now it works. There's no error because that field has indeed been assigned. All right, so here we have the most basic example. Now, the process for solving a null reference exception is as follows. First, you go to the offending line. Then you analyze what that line is doing and think of all the possible objects that could be set to null. Then you add some logs before that line to see the values stored in each of those possible objects. When you have confirmation of exactly what object is set to null, then you decide what you should do about it. So maybe it's okay that the object is null and you should do a simple null check. Or maybe the object should have been set to something, at which point you go backwards through your code to see where it should have been set. Okay, so this was a very general example. Now let's look at some real world examples. So over here I have this script. It's just a very basic script. Essentially it takes a target transform and then just calculates the direction and moves towards that target transform. So very basic. Now let's try running this code. And yep, we have our error. So again, the first step is going to the offending line. So line 11. So here it is, it's this line. Now step number two is to analyze this line and think of all the possible objects in here that could be set to null. Now if you want, go ahead, pause the video and try to figure it out. This is a pretty simple example. Okay, so here we are calculating the move direction. And in order to do that, we are using two objects. So we're accessing the target transform in order to get the target position. And we're accessing this transform in order to get this object position. So both of these two objects could possibly be set to null. Now the next step is to add some logs to identify exactly what is set to null. So up here, just add a debug.log on the target transform and another one on this transform. Okay, so now we run and yep, we have our logs. Now it seems that the second object is fine, but the first one is set to null. So double click on this log line and yep, it's this one. So the target is null. So down here, when you try to access the target position, we're going to try to access the position of a null reference and then we get our null reference exception. So now that we have confirmation of what object is null, now we need to think about what should we do about it. So should we perhaps ignore the target if it is null? Now maybe that could be one approach, but in this case, according to my particular game design, I want the player to always be moving towards the target. So based on my design, this really should have been set with the correct value previously. Now in this case, the variable is defined up here. It's defined a private transform for the target transform, and it's set up as a serialized field. So this is an attribute that you add when you want to expose certain private variables to the Unity editor. So this tells us that this reference should have been set in the editor. So if we go there, and yep, here we see the issue. So we have our move to target script, and down here our reference is set to null. So in this case, the solution is simply to remember to drag the reference. So down here is the target, just click and drag, and there you go. And now if we run, yep, there it is, now it works. The object is moving towards the target. So with this, we solved our error. Awesome. Okay, let's look at yet another example. So over here I have this game object, and then inside it I have a sprite for the player, and then inside that one I have a sprite for the helmet. Now let's say that we want to hide the helmet. So here is the script, it's very simple. We just do a transform, we find the player, we find the helmet, then we access the game object and set it to active to false in order to hide it. So let's run, and yep, there we have our error. So again, first step, double click. So the error is on this line. Now the second step is to analyze this line and try to guess all of the possible objects and possible reasons that something could be null in here. So once again, go ahead if you want, pause the video and try to figure it out. Okay, so there's really two possible errors in here. Now in terms of what could theoretically be null, the answer is actually four. So the transform is a class, so it could technically be null. Then over here, each find can return null. And then the game object is also a class, so it could also be technically null. However, this script is a mono behavior. So in order for this run, it needs to be attached to a game object. And a game object always has a transform component. So this transform reference will never be null. Then we have our two separate finds. So these take a name for the child game object, and these can indeed return null. And lastly, we have the game object, which is a class which technically could be null. However, in here we're accessing the game object of whatever transform we come from here. So if this one does return transform, then it's guaranteed that that transform will also have a game object. So just by looking at this line, I can tell that the issue is either with this find or this find. So either one of these could possibly be returning null. So now let's set some logs before running this line in order to identify it. Now here, since one of the finds is a child of the previous find, then we need to make sure that we add logs in order. So first we do a debug.log 
on the transform.find our player. So first we check if that find succeeds, and then we check for the other one, which is dot find. Then we have the helmet. All right, so let's see. And yep, we have our logs, and we can see that one of them is set correctly, but the other one is indeed set to null. So with this, we have correctly identified where the error is. Now the next step is figure out what to do about it. So let's double click to go to the offending line. So here it is. We can successfully find the player, but we cannot find the helmet game object. Now in this case, let's assume that the character is always meant to have a helmet. So this line should work, so we should not need to do a null check in here. And in this case, one particular thing is we're using find. And the thing with find is you have to remember that the name needs to be absolutely exact. So here we're calling find on helmet. And if we go into the editor, and yep, over here we can see the reason for the error. We have helmet typed with an uppercase H, but in our code we're using a lowercase H. Now find is case sensitive, so this helmet that we're using in here does not match this helmet that we're using in here. So since they are not perfectly exact, then the find returns null, which then causes our error. So in this case, let's just rename this and write it exactly as we have in the editor. And if we run, and yep, now it works perfectly. So the code ran, it found the player, it found the helmet, and it made it invisible. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's look at one last example. Over here in my scene, I have an object with a script, and then inside it, there's a circle visual with just this nice visual. Very simple, now let's look at the script. Okay, here it is. Now what we're doing is we're grabbing the visual, then we define a bunch of colors, and we do some randomness in order to pick a random color. We do all of that just on a wait just once, and then on every update, we're simply moving the visual transform in order to follow the mouse position. So very simple, just a circle with a random color following the mouse. Let's test. And yep, right away we have our null reference exception. So once again, let's follow the process. So the first step is to go to the offending line, so line 26. Okay, here it is, here is the error. Now step two is analyze and think of what could possibly be set to null. Here all we're doing is setting a position. So the only possible thing that could be null here is just this object. So step three is to verify that by adding a log. So let's add a debug.log on our circle visual transform. And yep, we have confirmation that that object is indeed what is set to null. So now the final step is to figure out what to do with this null object. So in this case, it's not meant to be null. So that means we need to go back in order to see where this object should have been set. Now this is a very simple script, so in here it's very easy to figure out. And by the way, here's one quick Visual Studio tip. If you click on an object in order to select it, and then press Control Shift and the up or down arrows, you can cycle through all the references where this object is used. Also, if you just place it in, you can see them all highlighted. Now, if you want, go ahead and try to pause the video and figure out why this object has been set to null. All right, so just by highlighting, you can right away see what's actually the issue. Now, you can see that this one is highlighted, this one is highlighted, and this one as well, but this one is not. So this tells us that the variable that we're using in these three spaces is different from the one that we're using in here. So here we see how C# -sharp works with regards to member variables and local variables. So the goal with this line is to set this field, but since we added the type, what we're actually doing here is creating a local variable with the exact same name. So when we set this to this value, we're actually not accessing this field member. And since we're not setting this one, then this one says null, which then caused our error down here. So the mistake in this case was simply making this one a local variable. If we take away the transform, yep, there you go. Now all of our references are indeed referencing the exact same object. So on awake, we set that one, and then on update, we can safely use it. And if we run, and yep, there you go. Now it works exactly as intended. So here we have solved yet another possible null reference scenario. Awesome. Okay, so here we've been solving this problem using debug.log in order to print the values that we think might be null. So this is one approach. However, for a more advanced approach, you can also use the debugger. So here I am working in Visual Studio, and you can easily add what is called a breakpoint. So down here on the left side on this empty space, just click, and yep, it showcases a nice red circle. So what this means is that when the code reaches this point, it will automatically stop executing. So the game is now running, and it automatically stopped as soon as it got into this line. And down here you have some windows related to debugging, so you can click on this one, and here you can see the actual values stored in each variable. So this is another way that we can see that the circle visual transform. So this variable is indeed set to null, so this is where we have our error. So the debugger is a very useful tool for looking at what the code is doing at any point. You can then step through your code, step out, and so on. 
Now, personally, when it comes to solving known references, for me, using logs is more than enough, and I also like forcing myself to analyze the code and think of what objects could possibly contain the error. But you can use whatever approach you prefer. Alright, so I hope this video helped you understand what are known reference exceptions and what causes them. And like I said, what I hope you take away from this video is not how to solve a specific problem, instead I want you to remember the process for solving it so you can fix the error whenever it happens. So you first go to the offending line, second you analyze and figure out what could possibly be null, third you add some logs to see the value stored in each object and identify which one is set to null, and lastly figure out what to do about it depending on the scenario. So this is the basic process that can be used to solve the error whatever it may appear. So next time you encounter it, now you know what to do. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.